Hello, everybody! Welcome to Dangerous the Game Alone. I'm Tosikamir, and we're living life a little dangerously. Uh, STF Unicorn is currently out at work, and we're about to bring you another new game for our channel. I know we've been doing a bunch of new games, a bunch of new stuff, and I know it just seems like we don't know what we're doing, or we don't have a theme, we don't, we're just playing random stuff it seems like but i'm telling you guys we have we finally have been able to settle on a couple of games that we can just rotate around and that we can play for at least the next couple of months this is one of them this is probably the easiest game for you guys my fellow viewers to be able to get into it's been out for a while um just came out for steam today so now it's available for steam it's been out for switch for a little bit it's been out on mobile for quite a while, and your progress in all of the games syncs and is super easy to just hop from one to the other to the other. Um, this game is Light Seekers. It is a physical and digital trading card game that allows you to actually just have the best of both worlds. Whichever way you choose to play, if you choose to play both, there's no penalty for doing that. You can actually have your cards physically and in the game at the same time. In fact, there's a benefit to doing that. So let's get started and just kind of showing off first how the game works. Um, yeah, so we are just going to go and uh, I've kind of set up a, um, a deck to kind of show you guys just the basics of how to play. Um, and we're just going to play against this guy here. We have this little teaching deck here that I made. Um, and since it's, against a, since it's against a computer opponent, I could take my time and try to explain some mechanics to you guys. Um, so yeah, we're going to jump into a game here. Let the opponent take their turn, and then I'll kind of get you guys up to speed about how the game works and um, what goes on with the entire uh, entire game. Okay, so now that there's nothing else going on screen, we'll describe how the game works. So, each deck that you create has three types of cards. One hero card five combo cards, and 30 action cards. So let's cover those step by step as we go. Um, if you do jump into it, there is a tutorial you can go through, but I'm just gonna try to like expound on things and describe things here, you know, so you know what you're getting into before you start. So your hero card is always here, and this is what your hero card looks like. Um, most heroes have some sort of ability here. In fact, all heroes do, um, and they all vary widely. Heroes also have three elements that uh, actually, you know what, before we go on any further, um, I need to do something real quick. I just need this so you can see where my mouse is. There we go. Can you guys... Yeah, it's not going to capture, I don't think. Let me see. Will it... Okay, now my mouse is capturing. Okay, so going back here. So, um, as you can see here, you have your three... These three symbols here. These symbols, you know, for a one-color hero, just have all the symbols that that color has available. These are all different elements that you can use. Um, if you see a gold ring around one, um, that element can be used as many times as you want in a turn as far as using cards. If it doesn't have that ring around it, you can use that element once in a turn. Um, different heroes will have different, different things going on with them, and, uh, this is a, this is your standard hero that you will get when you start the game. This will be the hero that you go through the tutorial with. So, which is why I built the deck around it. Um, so, the ability here, 
Um, the ability to deal one damage to another hero it can't be increased by other effects. Pretty self-explanatory. This number here down at the bottom is your starting health. Um, different heroes will have different starting health. Your health can never go above 35, which is why when you saw the computer earlier heal 6, he only went to 35. You can never go above 35 health. Um, so, that is your hero. And let's kind of take a look at some of these different cards here. So we have we have two of the card types here, or three of the card types. So your combo cards look like this. They'll have the word combo and then another type at the bottom. Um, those typing words are important. They'll have a cost here. And costs, they tell you how many other cards of what types you need to shuffle back into your deck in order to play that card. You can only play combo cards at the beginning of your turn, and when you do that, it sacrifices the rest of your turn. After you do your combo card, you will draw one card. Um, as such, they're pretty powerful in it, making card advantage really big in a game like this. Um, you can have five of those in a deck, and you can only have one of each in your deck. In fact, you must have five of those in your deck. Um, your second, then the rest of your cards here are all considered action cards. You can have 30 of those in your deck. You can have up to three of any one. Uh, there's going to be some exceptions for the new format that's coming out. Hey, Elaine, thanks for coming by. Kind of going over the rules here. Um, not going to re backtrack, but if you're really interested in the rules, you can uh, go back and kind of watch the rest of the video. Did, you didn't mention too much of it. Um, so these card, the other cards here that are highlighted, these are all um, action cards. And action cards, pretty much let's take an action. There's multiple different types of action cards. This one specifically is an attack card, does three damage, heals you for three. Pretty simple. There's other ones, um, like this one. This is a buff. Buffs is buffs are be like the main like kind of like permanent in the game, and. The way they work is, see these corners? Beginning of each of your turns, your buffs will rotate. And the number that is currently in the upper left-hand corner will be the number that applies to that card. So, for example, this Ancient Miner, when we first play it, there's an X up here so nothing happens. But next turn, it'll rotate and I'll draw one card. The turn after that, it'll rotate again and it'll dr I'll draw two cards because you draw whatever your rotated number of cards is here. And then you have, like, there's another example is this one. Doesn't do anything when you put it out, doesn't do anything the next turn, doesn't do anything the turn after that, but then if it gets here without getting removed, you're going to end up doing eight damage to your target, which is your opponent. Um, once again. Uh, so we're going to take, you get two actions per turn. Your actions can include playing a card, using an ability, or drawing a card. If you end, the only way you draw your card is at end of your turn. You could use both your turns, actions to draw a card. So as you see, if I were to end my turn right now, I would draw two cards. We're gonna play some cards here first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play an Ancient Miner. So we can draw some more cards to start next turn. Now you notice I can't play the second one. That's because you can only play one of every, uh, one of a, specific card each turn so even if i had the ability to play this other one which i don't anyway because you can only play one of that element remember why i talked about before with the gold element or the light up element versus the others see i couldn't even i couldn't play it. even if i had a different card that used that element i wouldn't be able to play it because you can only play one of those a turn um but i wouldn't be able to because i already played one of that one specifically so we're going to play this other buff here Basically, we're going to try to set up our board for a little bit later. Our opponent's going to take their turn. He's going to use his ability to deal the damage. And he placed a buff. We're going to hover over that buff, take a look at what it does. We draw a card from our Ancient Miner. So, hovering over this, it deals two damage to your target at the start of your turn if this is your only buff in play. So, as long as he doesn't put any other buffs or permanents out, he'll be doing two damage to me at the start of every turn. That could be pretty annoying. Um... But we've got things we can handle around that. So, see, this is another combo card we just drew. Where we can heal ourselves for 7, deal 6 damage to our target. 
but it costs one of each other element. So we're going to actually play this so you can see how this works. So we're going to play this, and now we need to actually pay for it. So it has to have one of each of these elements to play. So we have to use the other ancient miner. And if we put this one up here, it actually pays for both of the other symbols. We're going to have a little bit left over. That's fine, because when you pay for one of your combo cards, the cards that you use to pay get shuffled back in your deck. They don't get discarded. So I have a chance to redraw them at some point. Um, the only one that gets discarded, unless it says otherwise, is the actual combo card. And I have to do this at the start of my turn. I'm doing it. We're going to hit OK. So both of those cards, as you can see, are going in the deck. You get the nice little deck shuffle. And then we draw a card because that was a combo card. We don't get any other choices. That ends our turn. Take two damage from the buff. Another one damage. He chose to activate his ability for his first spot. He drew a card for his second action. It's going to be our turn. Our buffs rotate again. We draw two cards from Ancient Miner. And we're sitting here. Hey, Exopath, how you doing? We're sitting here at a pretty good pretty good spot, in my opinion. Um, looking at the cards we have, I think we're just going to do some straight damage here. So we're going to throw this Magma Spitter up here. Go six damage, take two. But we don't want we we don't want to keep that damage on us, so we're gonna use this crystal bat here and just like leech him for another three and get that health right back. And nothing else we can do. We use both of our actions. We don't draw any cards. We take two. We took another four from that action and draw a card. So it's so now our cannon goes off. And just like that, back down to down to 12. So, now we have 5 damage here, which is all well and all good. But we're starting to run out of cards, and if we draw another combo card, we're not going to have enough stuff to do. Um, this is going to disappear next turn and not do anything. Um, we're pretty far ahead. We have, a, we have double the life that he has, so we're just going to draw 2 cards this turn. We'll eat the 2 take the damage from his ability and then he's going to draw a card so he's in the same situation we are except he's got the that advantage of being able to play and, and do two damage each turn regardless so looking at we just drew this one where we can draw a card when we play this and then that will happen when we play it and then next turn he will have to take three attack cards from his hand and throw them back into his deck. So, you know, we're going to play that. And since we're going to play the buff game, we're going to play this Prism Cannon too. And we're going to hope that he can't remove anything of ours. We take the two. He's playing a second buff, which means his, his a uh, little guy up here won't be able to do anything anymore because it's not his only buff. We just got rid of his one attack card. But this guy can't do anything anymore because it's not his only buff. What does this guy do? He's reducing all damage coming in by two. Which means if we were to use something like this, we would only do one damage to him. Um, and this would only do three damage. That all being said, let's try to wait that buff out and draw some cards. Yes, Frogger is ineffective. So now that damage uh, damage protection increases, he removes our Prism Cannon with this ability. That, will, that one died naturally, but this one, um, it's a burn card. So if you see this burn... You can read it right here. It can't be stored under the cards. Be brought out of the discard pile or move to hand or deck after being played or entering play. So it's like a one-time use card is basically what burn means. There's no other way to reuse them. This lets him remove up to three buffs. So I'm not going to play another buff this turn because if I do, it, this is just going to rotate and remove it. And it removed my cannon before it damaged him. So that was a good play. He still has damage protection plus three. So... 
See, like, I'm not even going to play this even if I could because he would just remove it. But I don't I don't have the stuff to afford it. So what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to use this uh, Boulder Feast to heal. And then since I really don't want to do damage to that Dissipates, I'm just going to draw another card. And we got another heal card, so that'll be great. He's just going to draw two cards. And since we're waiting for that buff to dissipate, we're just going to throw another heal up. And draw a card. So next turn, that Frogger is going to actually hit us. Because now he's effective again. So now we can start putting buffs back out. Can't put this one out because we can't afford it. Um, this will do six damage if it lasts. So we're going to pop that out. And then we're going to hit for five here. If it lasts, oh, we can't play that. And you see there's an extra kill because I already used the fire that turn. That's my bad. So we can put the crystal bat out instead. And so if he doesn't heal himself next turn and doesn't get rid of this buff, we're probably going to win. And all he does is throw some damage our way. And that's going to end the game because he's going to take six damage from our buff when it rotates. And I still have two actions for the turn. You know, I can play either one of these. We're going to play the flame bat. That's a simple, simple game. Uh, we're, I'm going to explain to you exactly what you're seeing here on the victory screen. So on the victory screen here, you have your account level underneath your current hero's name. Um, account level will is the, if I'm not mistaken, the combined level of all the other levels that you, that you have on your character. Um, I'm going to have to go look at that just to make sure. Um, each of the six colors in this game have a level and the more you use a color and the more cards you play the more of these little chests you're going to get we'll open up all the chests at the end of the stream so you can see exactly what they do um so um before we go into any more games just to give you another idea we're going to give you an idea of like all the different functionality here that you can use um first things first let's say you have this on whatever let's say you uh you decide to and probably the best the with the people that are viewing the channel let's say they're going to get it on their switch um so you get it on your switch you play a while and then you realize oh i want to use this scan feature well the scan feature doesn't exist on the switch because there's no camera on the switch that's okay what you can do is you can link your account and when you link your account what you'll do is you'll go into this on the device that has your um, game on it and you will click generate. I'm not gonna click it here because what happens then is it generates a code that you can put into the beginning of your other device and basically keep your progress across all of your devices or across Steam even so that your device state, your, your, uh, your account progress syncs across all of them. So this would be where you would go to move it from Switch to your phone or from your phone to Switch or from either of them to Steam. Any which way, this is how you do it. Um, you can't log into any more than one device at a time. Like if I were to go onto my phone and try to log in right now, it would disconnect me from Steam because that's what I'm streaming it on right now. Um, and so on and so forth. So that's your option there. We're going to cancel here. Go back. Um... So we're going to segue a little bit. So we're going to say, okay, so why would I want to scan things? So this scan button, and we're going to go into here. You're going to get a little face cam of me. There's my face reveal for you guys. And as you can see here, it's kind of using my, it's you use whatever camera you have. And you can do one of two things with this. You can either, A, you could scan your actual cards that you own into the game and then you can use them in the game level up or what you can do is you can find other people's uh 
you get you use other people's uh, tribute cards, and a tribute card is a card that you get in your booster packs. And if you use those, you can find pictures of these on the internet and everything. And what you could do is, I have a picture right here of these, and you could put them up and you could scan them. Let's see if I can get it to scan. May not scan because of the uh, because of the reflection. We're gonna try here. Let me see if I can focus the camera. I was, I'm hoping that it works this way as far as like using my webcam, but my webcam I think is a bit fuzzy. So I'm not going to be able to show it to you guys. A lot of it's just because of the way the webcam is. Um, but what you could do is you could do it the other way around and that's what I've done is where you can pull the pictures of the cards up on another device and use your phone camera which is a lot better than like this shitty webcam that I have and what will happen is it'll scan the card and these scans I'm actually I'll show you uh, I think it's in here actually uh, booster cards so if you buy a physical booster pack you scan your little booster card that comes in with it. You scan it in, and that card becomes registered to you. Um, then you can share that card with as many people as you want. And the more people that scan that card, the more points you get. And they get points for scanning the card, too. And those points give you free packs, or free stuff in the digital game. That's one use of the scanning feature. The other use is scanning in your actual Light Seekers cards. And by doing that, you can actually use them in-game, and as they level up, you get more gold, which is this currency right here. And that gold, you can spend 100 gold and get a booster pack. So plenty of ways to get free cards. Plenty of ways for that to work. Um... And like I said, you go out and buy a starter deck. You know, $10, $12, $15, depending on which starter deck you get on Amazon. You can scan every single card in that starter deck using your phone, using Steam, you know, if you have a better webcam than I do, and um, use them in your game. You know, true cross-platform ability across all platforms with this game. Um, so let's take a look at the store real quick, just kind of see what the store looks like. Um, just so you can see how these this pricing is actually really fair for the pricing it has. Um, so I've bought a, I've spent about thirty bucks on gems in the store. One of the things that they actually have is for right now on the Switch and probably on Steam too. I'm not sure because I've already redeemed it. There is a uh, two hundred gem pack a welcome pack as it were um that gives you 10 booster packs and a couple other bonuses booster packs are normally you know 100 gems a piece a booster pack has five cards in it um you know you just so you can see what a booster you know general booster looks like you know you get Two uncommon or better in each pack. You can buy them with gold or gems. Um, if any of you are familiar with Hearthstone, any duplicates you have that you can't use, they have a shard system, kind of like the dust in Hearthstone, where you can craft cards if you want with any of your extras, or you can disenchant, or in this game, recycle cards that you're not using to get more of these to craft whatever you want digitally. Um, super fair prices and let's go take a look at the actual buying of of these so you're gonna see uh, six different options you can buy anywhere from a hundred to six thousand two hundred sixty gems at a time buying each package for the first time will grant double gems that's across all accounts so you can't just go to three different accounts and buy three sets um, you can see the blue ones here are the ones that I've purchased which means for these I got for the ten dollar one I got uh, 1120 gems for the $20 one I got 2320 gems when I got them spent them 
great value. Um, the fact that you can, you know, put this amount of money in and get a huge amount of stuff is absolutely fantastic. Um, these individual packs here are like for the different colors. You can buy specific packs just for the colors that you want. Um, these packs over here, you can buy. These are the different um, kind of like sets that exist. Awakening, Mythid, Mythical, and Kindred. Um, the Awakening's the oldest one. Kindred's the newest one. So if you want to buy from a specific set, you can do that. This Lost Relics pack is a really good deal. Um, so you're getting you're getting three packs, um, and you're, you're spending the extra fifty gems instead of getting a chest. You're getting a guaranteed rare item, which items are a type of card in the game, and rares are always disenchant for at least a hundred. So even if you get a whole bunch of extra stuff you don't want, um, that's an extra hundred disenchant right in your pocket. Um, you know, premium chests will include uh, all different types of rewards, campaigns, um, sometimes cards. Like that's where you get like random things such as deck backs, play mats, avatars, and we can kind of go look at those. So like your collectibles, there's three different types of collectibles. You get different play mats that you use during the game. Um, you can, or you can unlock them with shards if you get a whole bunch of extra cards. You know, and you can kind of see what they look like. You know, once, this is just cosmetic stuff at this point. Avatars are like the picture that you have up in the upper corner. A lot of them are based on the cards in the game or their concept art or whatever. Um, card back, same thing. Purely cosmetic. Definitely, de definitely a good amount of cosmetic stuff. And none of this stuff is absolutely necessary. You can purchase it with cash. You can also find it in these loot treasure chests. Um... There's an achievement system um, that syncs across all platforms. Um, some achievements will give you rewards. Um, some of them won't. You know, there's achievements based on each color. Um, a lot of different stuff here to do if you want to grind for either if you're an achievement collector and are trying to 100% the game, um, so to speak. Or if you're just trying to... You know, whatever you're trying to do. Um, there are daily and weekly missions that pop up. For every seven missions you complete, you get a free booster pack. Um, missions will also give you golden gems. And every five booster packs you open, you get a mini booster. A mini booster is three cards and they have no commons in them. So they're all uncommons, rares, or mythics. All of your loot that you get will pop up here. All different types will come up with all different their symbols. We're going to open this chest right now just because we're here. So, uh, chest, regular chests have two pieces. And as you can see here, I already had this Corrupted Spirit, so they gave me five shards instead. And I got a new avatar here. You know, collecting all the avatars eventually will be great because then every avatar I get, I'll just get shards. You know, which is great. Until then, you know... Some of them look really cool. And you, if you noticed in the bottom corner, there was a reroll option. You can always spend gems to reroll packs, chests, anything to try to get something different. Um, once again, another great option that's there. Um, so we're going to go into play. And so I haven't actually found any campaigns. Um, any new campaigns like that you found in a chest. But this one just popped up. And so when you see a campaign, basically it's four missions. And if you complete the missions, for each one you complete, you'll get your regular going through the missions and, uh, you know, all the level up stuff you get. And you'll get a chest for winning up to, like, this really, really big chest over here. And since we want to see another game, let's go into another game. So I'm not going to use the teaching deck this time. This time I'm going to use... A, my astral deck, which is all the yellow cards. And we're going to show off how that works. So these campaigns are like basically you're starting in a 
position of um, you're starting in a position of weakness. So like they, they normally start out with some extra stuff that you normally wouldn't have. So when he plays a defend card, he gets to rotate action buffs on any hero um, backwards. Um, I'm not even sure how that actually works, but this Dust Cleaver here gives him uh, proficiency in solar, and he gets additional action if he has 10 or less health. Th this is going to be rough. And then he also has these to start. If you draw a defend card, you may show it to deal whatever's in the corner damage to your target. Oh, man. So this is going to be a defensive deck with a bunch of damage coming our way. That is going to be rough. So we're gonna get we're we're we're, we're we, we we've got this covered though. So my ability on mine is I get to start the game with additional card in my hand, uh, and otherwise an average character. Um, so that's why I have five cards. If you start if you go first, you get four cards. If you go second, you get five. Uh, but I have five because of my ability. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna play the shapeshifter here. Draw one card face up. If it's gravity, heal for five. If it's solar, deal five to your target. So we're going to play that. It was gravity. We heal for five. Puts us at our max. And now you see how this one is outlined in red? That means that there's a contingent ability. Um, so this removes one buff from the recipient. And you increase this by one if your last discarded card is lunar, which that last one was. We're going to play this. And we're going to get rid of both of those right from the rip. Try to even out this game a little bit. And he just draws two cards. So we can put some defenses up or whatever. You know what we're going to do? We're going to pop this one defense. We're n I don't even know what he has planned. We're going to pop we're going to pop a defense up just to be safe. And then I'm going to draw a card. So he plays another one of those and then attacks. My gosh. All right. So there's our defense. So I've got a nice little combo here about ready to set up since I drew that card. So my reality twister lets my last discarded card count as any element, which this deck is based on whatever's on last card on your discard, which means now I'm with that. I'm going to play this Dawn Stalker. When it gets to the last buff, it does six damage. It does four more if the last card is lunar, but my last card can be anything I want. So in it goes. He's going to remove two of my buffs because he's an asshole. And he draw a card. And he reveals the defend card to do damage to me. So, yeah. So, I don't know what kind of combos he has, so I'm going to make sure he can't play any combos. Pop that up. Then we're going to draw and hope we draw into a combo ourselves. So, this card, basically I can cycle it for three damage and keep throwing it back into my hand if I choose to. Um, you know, I really want to draw more cards. I want to try to get to one of my combo cards instead, though. No luck. So that being said, we're going to drop drop three damage. Get the card right back in our hand. Then we're going to throw an Astronomer down. If it makes it to the end, we get to draw four. He is just drawing cards, trying to draw his defense cards. He drew one. We're taking damage. There goes our Twister. There goes our Wanderer. We're going to throw up a shield 
and some damage. Get that card back. At least we get our four cards from the gravity bubble. But he's going to reset absolutely everything else. So there goes our buffs. Let's see here. So let's get rid of that buff. And then we need to heal. So let's uh, do some healing here. We get additional action. And... Uh, we're going to draw a card with it. Alrighty, so... Let's draw some cards. We're going to discard this full moon to draw two cards. And then, let's go ahead and pop this into play. Because now we have a black hole in our hand. So now our discard hand is anything, and we're going to draw a card, actually. He draws two. Alrighty, so... We're not going to be able to get our black hole off as easily as we thought. We're going to Impatient Scholar. We're going to discard that heal card and to draw two more cards. And then we're going to draw another card. We're going to draw a bunch of cards. We're going to try to get some more options in our hand. There's another Flying Fortress. And he put up a Healing Reduction buff. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna do this and that way we can remove all of their buffs at the same time. That pays for three of the elements, and then we're gonna pay that here. We'll draw a card for doing that. Possibly one of the cards we just put back in our deck. So unfortunately I can't play my coronal loop because I don't have a lunar card in my hand. Um, we're just going to try to burn them down a little bit. Bunch of damage. So we need healing. And we need it fast. That's not going to do it. Mm. 
and he decides to draw instead. He could have killed me. He decided to draw instead. I think we're dead next turn. Um, I definitely think we're dead next turn. You know, I could do a couple damage here. Draw a card. I'm not gonna do a damn bit of good though. He is taking it easy on us, it seems like. Okay. Um, we might have a chance here. Oh yeah, definitely toying with us. I'm gonna play this Twister. Yep, that's game. I didn't think that was gonna go well. The right draw, we could have had that. But we're just going to run it again. I do think this deck can beat it, so we're going to stick with the same deck. Interesting. All right, let's shape shift to start our discard pile. I mean, some of it's luck, but another part of it is there it definitely is a good amount of skill involved with trying to figure out exactly how to build your deck and play your cards. Now I'm going to get all my healing cards. My god. Oh, man. Alright. Let's just draw some cards. Jesus. Well, you know, a good thing we have this black hole that's about to get played. Alright. So I only have to pay two for this. Um, actually, you know what? We're going to use our other combo card. Remove all of his buffs. Yeah, basically, black hold the whole set of fortresses. All right, so. So he's got this anytime I attack him bullshit going on up here. Um, a whole bunch of heals are sitting in my hand. good thing is that's the only attack card I have so like if I keep this just with that card in my hand I could just wind that down because I have no other card to discard so we're gonna play this buff so we don't have to draw a card 
and see how he changes the field. So why is that rotating back? What's that ability? What, what ability does he have? He's got to have some sort of weird ability that's doing that. He draws two cards. Let me look at his ability again. Got it. Okay. All right. Oh. Once again, we'll get a free attack in. And we're literally using this just so we don't have to draw a card. Choosing to keep it on top and do that. Oh god, that doesn't look good. Okay, so he's just reducing our damage reduction here. Err. Goes the Dawn Wanderer. Which means we do a Mirror Beast that. And then draw a card. Got an attack card out of it. Hey Peter, how you doing? We're gonna use this. It's gonna make us put back our mirror beast. We're gonna get rid of that and that. And then I'm gonna do this with the intent of drawing two cards. God. <laughs> it's just, just, oh man. Just got rid of you guys. All right. I'm just going to draw. Use this and shuffle our mirror beast back in. Get a new card draw and four damage off. We'll use this to get a little bit of healing, get additional action. So it's two healing. And then we're just going to draw a card. And he's just drawing cards. He reveals to deal some damage. Since he drew that, we're going to play this so he can't play combos. Block his combos for four turns since he had to show that. Yay! Yay! <laughs> God damn it. All right, let's get some cards in a couple turns. Draw. Uh, my God, here we go with the bullshit. Alright, 
I need some damage reduction. Let's pop that up. Oh boy. Now he's going off. We're just going to play those, and we're going to play for some late game, hoping he can't kill us in a turn or two. He draws cards instead. None of them are attacks. We're going to get some cards. He can play combos again, though. But we just drew four. Do we get the cards to kill him with it? Yes, we do. We're just going to end the game right now. Screw that bullshit. Woo! So that gave us that chest there, and now we have another battle. Pushing deeper into the forest, the roar of the battle hunger creeble fades in the distance. So that st the head of you stands a great mound layered with trees and other vegetation. Stepping forward, the mound begins to move. And something pulls itself from the earth. That sounds like some lemon bullshit, but alright. Let's go. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna take you try this other deck. Now this is a multicolor deck. Multicolor decks work a little bit differently. Um, first off, some heroes are mythic, and mythic hero will have one of their colors replaced. Automatically giving them to access to two colors. But now you have to start paying attention to the upper symbols and build your decks accordingly based on that. So, I get to go first. Let's take a look at let's take a look at my card and what it does. General Carnage. Um, he has access to Dread abilities, Poison and Shadow, and the Tech ability. Um, I forget what this one's called. I apologize. Um, but um, that one is unlimited. And he has the ability to deal two... He deals two damage to himself, search through your deck for an item card, and then place that card on top. And we're going to use that ability, because that is what this deck's core is based on. I have one item card in the deck, and we're going to throw that directly on top. And then we're going to draw that card. What the hell is that? If your target's last discarded card is not an attack card, deal that much damage to them. Okay. We'll make the last card an attack. Holy shit. No damage. What the? F if your last target's last card is not a defend card, deal that much damage. I don't have a defend card. I'm gonna take 18 fucking damage. Um. Shit. Rush down. Oh, man. Your target cannot defend. That's always nice.
All right, what are you gonna do to me now? Holy freaks. Draw cards. All right, I can deal with you drawing cards. All right, we're gonna use our ability first. And a draw card. Oh! Well, thankfully it's going to be a buff card. Because we're going to get the discard a buff card, and we just basically can't use cards in between there. We weren't planning on doing it, so we're going to save ourselves 18 damage here. We're literally going to... Save ourselves some damage here by following our plan. Oh, we're taking 18 damage regardless. Oh. 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 Okay. Give me some extra actions, maybe. That's not even going to help, is it? I'm dead. I am so dead. Yikes. See, now these campaign decks are there designed by the developers to use rules that, like, normal games wouldn't allow. Um, so they're meant to be powerful. Holy crap. All right. Mm. I still think it's a good deck for it. That's cute. Buff card. Well, I'm not getting a buff card into my discard pile anytime soon. So that's as good as dead. Um, so this deck's whole concept is to put a bunch of things on my buff bar um, in order to increase the usage of my item that has an ability to deal damage. While still having some direct damage sitting in the back. nothing in my discard pile so that does nothing to me that's a nice that is nice to know so if I don't discard cards I'm good that is nice to know This is going to be a cheese win. At this point. I'm 
I mean, we're going to get a card in our discard pile here next turn that I use an ability. There's a there's cards in our discard pile. Is this a buff based one though? It is. So, we're still good. Still a buff. All this extra healing that we're wasting because we our opponent isn't doing any damage to us. I guess I'm okay with it. Alright. try to throw some extra damage his way before we, you know, get too crazy here. We might be able to pull this out just like straight... Oh! Now you want attack cards. We don't have an attack card in our hand. Yay. That's alright. take the 18. I think it's a little late for our opponent. Yeah, too late for him. Alright. Finally spotting a break in the tree line. You find yourself in an open way. However, upon stepping out into the bright daylight, you realize something is amiss. Where only moments ago, the sounds of birds and beasts filled the air. Now silence is all that remains. All right. Let's run Carnage again. Apparently we're fighting a tree. Yes. We're fighting a tree clearing. Alright, what do you start with? Okay. A heal deck. Q! punishments right now. Alright. I got big numbers too! big numbers um a 
stupid forest. Bunch of woods. Yeah. All right, switching decks. this bullshit right out from the beginning. Let's go. Okay. Alright. Alright. Somehow I got the worst of that exchange, but... drawing up for something. Damage reduction on my side. discard pile a little bit here. I do not like the fact he's drawing so many damn cards. Alright. trees. Alright. 
this is just looking silly. No defend cards. Go away. Alright. No, this is not. This is Light Seekers. It's on the Switch. Steam, mobile, and is a physical card game. Dang it, I'd rather get rid of those. And then we still have another play. We're just gonna draw. some buffs. Oh. Okay. Which one are you getting rid of? The damage. It's alright. New card. Oh, that's great. All right, draw. All right, we're just gonna draw a bunch of cards here. Cannot be attacked, huh? Really? Oh. Oh. Well. That means that's dead, that's dead, that's dead, that's dead. Um. Yeah, let's just draw some cards. Playing these, hopefully we can outlast his buffs here. Ah, five damage, removing a buff. Which one are you gonna remove? Yep, the damage. Jesus, all right. I still can't attack, that's right. I can't remove his buffs. Lovely. Just want to make sure. Yep. Oh boy. I really don't have any healing. have to draw and hope for healing. Hey!
for all the good that's gonna do. Still can't remove buffs. Can't heal. I'm dead next turn. Doesn't even matter. Oh. Alright, let's try this teaching deck. Maybe that can do something. When the teaching deck wins. Alright, let's go, guys. Burn these trees down. Yay! Well, I mean, you can get a whole bunch of different seeds. I'll show them all often after this game. Alright, we'll play that, which gives us a free buff play. And two cards, and then we'll, uh... I'm gonna force them to make some hard choices here. Couldn't use both bats at the same time, so just single bat and draw. No buffs for you. Oh, we're getting destroyed though. My gosh. 5, 8, 16. turn. I have no way to remove those. It takes a... But I don't have enough damage to do... I could go to him down to three with my ability. That's it. He's gonna hit me for four. So I'm gonna have to play this and draw a card. All right, if I survive, I can win, hopefully. Depends on how much he heals. He hit me four. Depends on if he can hit me for any more damage. He's drawing. We might have this. He's at eight. Wait, we do have this. I'm gonna draw a card. I only need to do eight damage. I have it, right here. My gosh. Woo! 
The training deck wins. Barely. Oh, but who gives a crap? Well then. Approaching Moon Moon's throne, you see the princess in the distance. The small, green, shoddily dressed, snouted princess. Ah, you fell for the trap. Comes the eager cheer of Moon Moon, throwing off the scraps of fabric that sealed his true identity. Now you in trouble. I've literally been trolled. Yay! All right. Let's try Carnage. Oh god, this... Why does this just... Okay, hold on. Let's look at it. You don't draw a card after playing a combo. So that's a negative. So he has a negative, but he starts with 35 health instead of 30. Okay. And what does this do? Heal for 7 and restart the buff. So that means I need to get rid of that, like, fast. Let's use our ability. Get our item on the top. And draw said item. Oh, he's got more. Oh. Oh boy. Alright. Alright. It's okay. It's alright. If I don't damage you, you can't heal. Oh, a 20. Core number three, damage you. Okay. All right. Just thinking out loud here. Or thinking in silence here. Alright, so. Let's play this so we get a card draw. He's just gonna heal up the damage I do this turn anyway. Let's put this up. I really need to get to some of my cards that get rid of buffs. Alright. Put the repair bot up. Draw a card. No, you're right, but that's not in this deck, so... He got another mood slam. That's cute. Alright, so this turn he takes five more damage from each attack. So this would be the turn I'd have to kill him. Let's see if I math this right.
Almost. This might be the deck to do it because I can get those multiple attacks off once the moon slams are done. This might be the deck to do it. I think I'm gonna play it again. Maybe when we get so many attacks off, might literally be the way to play this. assassin skill to get a bunch of extra actions so we could start right with a buff on the field. There's the moon slam. We need to get moving with this. So we need to spend an action to put the flame claws up just to have it up. And then we need to draw. So that doesn't help me with extra attacks. So because that doesn't help me with extra attacks, we're just gonna draw two cards. one first. Hopefully we draw something better. We didn't. And we'll draw. And die before we even get a chance to do our crazy damage. Yeesh. Alright. I'll try another deck if this if you don't win with this one. Yo, that healing though, like maybe the black hole thing would help. Like, that is definitely a way to go about this. I mean... Alright.
fair draw too. Let's see what happens. I might actually put the ramparts up. Ramparts up. And the flame claws. Throw a rock bomb up. Another moon slam. We got this. So that I can do this. No! Shit, I hit the wrong button. Fucking cripes. Thank god. Thank god. I, I, I literally hit the wrong button. Oh, that could have been bad. Let's just finish up now. Holy crap. I meant to hit the item and not the ability. I did two damage to myself and proved nothing. Holy shit. Okay. Yo. Alright, though. Oof. Well, we completed the campaign. Now we're gonna open our loot. All right, red pack. Her. So I've got a gem set to re-roll. I really didn't get anything new. I think I'm gonna re-roll this pack. And we did get a rare out of it. Better roll. Good stuff. Alright. That's for opening five packs. This is one of those mini boosters. Alright, so two common chests with two items each in it. Three of the 50 gem chests. And the big chest. We get a booster pack and a currency for that. So let's see here. I honestly think I'm going to re-roll this. I already have this hero. 
I'd rather try to get a rare. I'm going to spend 10 to reroll. And that wasn't the best reroll in the world. Spend 20 more and reroll one more time. At least this is four new cards. I'll, I'll take this one. So, each week you can re-roll one daily mission and one weekly mission. You get your missions, as you can see, daily, weekly. Um, hey Cyclone, yeah, you, I mean, I'm not taking on any challengers today. Today I'm more teaching. As for the giveaway, sure. Um, Follow, follow the uh, link below in the description and uh, go on to Glee. Make sure that you're signed up. Make sure that you um, do everything that's required. <coughs> Get those entries. Um, link is in the description. Um, there's plenty of ways to be able to join our giveaway. For those of you who, don't, who are here and don't know what our giveaway is, we will be giving away one of three items uh, after August, April 30th, 2019, we're going to be giving away a Nintendo Switch, uh, $200 in Nintendo eShop credit, or $250 in Amiibo-related merchandise. And those, uh, the details and the restrictions on who can win exactly what are in the description, or not in the description, but are on, in the link in the description uh continental u.s residents only for the amiibo uh u.s eShop only if you want the eShop. uh the switch can be sent anywhere in the world so yeah you can definitely uh go and check there All right, so we completed that whole thing. We're going to go into ranked. Play a couple more matches to end the, end the stream. We'll play until we get the two hours here. We're at an hour and 40 minutes. So... Yeah, I mean, it was great content, the fact that it was there. I think every time I get a campaign, I'm going to come on and stream it. That campaign was fun. Um, we're gonna, we're just going to play until we get the two hours and then call it a day. Or we haven't played the build in a while, so... So this is an actual person playing. We don't know what they're when they're playing on, but yes, the owl is thir thirsty for blood. All right, so we're going first. And I don't like my hand. So we'll double buff up. I really don't think that's an owl, though. It might be. I just don't think it is. Alright. I need something to go into my discard. Actually, I need that to go into my discard.
smack. Reducing damage received. Smart play. Just gonna draw some cards. Try to outlive this uh, wall over here. What's his ability anyway? Heal for two when you deal damage if you have ten or less health. Right, we're gonna get rid of this mirror beast here. Just to lower that a bit. Literally just trying to grind it out. Alright. Throw this up. Throw some healing and additional action. And throw our stalker up. Hope to draw into some damage before then to finish him off. He's got a shit ton of cards over there. did nothing for me. It's got an interesting deck. Removes my buffs. Good play. I guess I can't even really be mad. of stuff going for him. I think I am literally going to play this, see what it's on the top. I'm going to discard it to draw two. So I'm going to waste my heal just to make sure I can get rid of two buffs with that if I need to. Yep, here's the ability to draw a card, heal, draw a card. ton of cards over there. a good one.
and we'll just draw a card. Ignore any damage that would defeat you. Move this card back to your deck. Okay. So I'm going to have to kill him twice. The way that looks. I see the strategy of this deck. That's annoying. I could definitely see the strategy of the deck now. Hey, can't be attacked for three turns. Ain't that cute? Here he goes off. Off to the races. This rate, we're gonna this will be the last game of the stream. Holy butts. Good, good, good. Um, I'll be done after this game anyway, it looks like, Lane. Yay, move the buffs.
No combos again for me. He's out of cards in his deck. All right. I think that's going to kill me. Yep, that's going to kill me. actually a really that was definitely annoying but i like seeing decks like that where like you can tell that deck was put together really really well um sucks losing to it but you know it is what it is So that was the end of the season, by the way. We only had like an hour left. So we finished in the top 45%. That's pretty good for only having played for two, three days. So we get a card back. We get... A booster pack, we get a bronze avatar, we get some shards and some currency. Season 4 begins. Let's open up our rewards, see what we get. Ooh, another 100 shards. Take that. No rare in this one for some reason. This is all shards. This is 25, 35, 45, 55, 60. This is 65 shards. I think we're going to re-roll it. Good. We got 75 shards and two new cards. We'll take that. We got a new card back. Um, I actually like the card back. Pretty cool. And uh, what else we get here? Of these that we've got throughout the stream here. So our season three bronze. Missed a couple apparently. Maybe I didn't. Oh, I didn't. Okay. But yeah, definitely did really well. Um, that's the thing. I don't. I don't even have that many cards. I have. I have four hundred sixty-one cards. Only like a fourth of what's totally available. All in all, this is absolutely fantastic game. I'm done to be. I'm definitely going to be streaming it more. I'm going to try to build some more decks to show off, or at least play other campaigns as I get them. You know, showing you guys having a good time. If you want to see more of this, let me know in the comments below. And just so you know, Unicorn plays this too. So she's got her game going. Maybe we'll have her come on the stream at some point. 
and play her stuff. Um, either way, this was a blast. I had absolutely an amazing time. Tomorrow, we are going to be playing sometime... Uh, I just think about this. Yes, tomorrow evening, we are going to be playing... Dragon Marked for Death, new game that came out for the Switch today. Um, I got played a little bit of it just to kind of get an idea of how the game plays. And I am really pumped to play that. It's a, a co-op 2D RPG, um, 2D platforming RPG. It's really, really cool. Um, so that's going to be on stream tomorrow. Uh, but thank you everyone who came by. Those that were in the chat, thank you. Those who weren't in the chat... Hey, Exopath, I'm just about to sign off, so... Uh, but either way, um, thank you all for who came and showed up and had a good time learning Lightseekers. Um, until next time, guys, I'm Tosikamir, and I'm reminding you, it's dangerous to game alone. Take this. Thanks for watching. Bye!